Welcome to Haxby Shed. This is a rear brake disc or brake rotor from a Volvo S60. This side isn't too bad. But if I turn it round, you can see that this side is badly corroded and the caliper and pads were only gripping on this part here. But also, in this design, the handbrake operates on this drum. And the face of the drum is badly corroded. So as a minimum, it needs skimming here, and it needs skimming across here. When we were looking for a lathe and trying to decide what kind to buy, we were thinking about what jobs we might want to do. And the question was whether or not we needed a gap bed lathe. Because for a small lathe, if you have a gap, if you need a gap, you're reducing your choices. Well, my son and I thought probably the biggest thing we would want to work on would be a brake disc. This brake disc is 290 across, that's 11 and a half inches, and the lathe has a 140 millimeter throw, so 280 in diameter, and that's about 11 inches. It's possible I might just get this in without taking a gap out. And if I can do that, probably I'll mount it in the four jaw chuck here and just machine that face, the underside face as you can see it there and the drum face for the handbrake. This face is in good condition and it's this face that clamps up against the hub on the wheel. And so therefore th this face is the datum. So if I can get it in the fore jaw with this face pressed hard against the jaws, hopefully it'll, it'll spin true to this particular face. Now what I'll need to do is to clock this and see if there's any warp on the disc. If the disc is warped, then I'll have to skim the back as well. That by the, that I mean the bit I'm pointing to now. Um, and that will start to give me problems. The disc itself has got five stud holes in it for the, where the wheel clamps on, where the wheel studs go. And clamping five studs to a faceplate could be a bit tricky because the faceplate holes are divided into quarters rather than into um, you know, easily taking five studs. So let's just hope that uh, I can do it as planned in the fore jaw, that this is running true and then I just have to skim the other face, which would make it a lot easier. We need to give some thought to cutting speeds. The diameter, as I mentioned, is about 11 inches or 290, how I measure that as. And if I multiply that by pi, I get the circumference, which is about 0.9 of a metre. If I measure the smaller dimension at the root of the disc, it's about 220. And if I multiply that up, I come up with a circumference here of about 0.6 metres. The cutting speed for mild steel with high speed steel tools is 20 to 28 meters per minute. Certainly in my book it is anyway. And if I divide out the surface meters per minute by the circumference, for this larger dimension I get 22 RPM and for this inner dimension I get 33 RPM for high speed steel tools but I'll be using carbide tools and they'll cut at two to four times the speed of high speed steel. So I'm going to try it at 50 RPM for here and 100 RPM for here. And because I've got an inverter on the lathe with a variable frequency control, I'll simply speed the lathe up a bit as the tool is moving across here. Here are the gearbox speeds on the lathe. I fitted 
a double sized drive pulley to this lathe and I've set the inverter to operate in a range between 50 Hz and 25 Hz, down to 25 Hz. So we're in the UK, so that means the motor speed can be adjusted from full speed down to half speed. So if you're following that, these are the speeds that you can see there on the gearbox, the RPM, that you get when the motor's running at half speed. It means that I can turn up the inverter variable speed to double these speeds. So I'm looking for a range between 50 and 100 RPM. So if I select 48 RPM, that will be the speed when the motor's running at 25 Hertz, half speed of the motor line shaft, and I can adjust the variable speed to twice that, to 100. So that's the setting that works best for me. I know a lot of people, they will overspeed their motors. I don't do that. And also, they'll have a range which runs much lower than half speed, much lower than 25 hertz. I don't do that either. I kind of set the main range that I want with the gearbox, and then I work uh, in between that range that I've set on the inverter, between half speed and full speed. Here's my four jaw, and the next step is to reverse the jaws. And I've made up this little bit of kit, which takes the pain out of unscrewing the jaws. And I can just reverse them like that. Okay, so I'll do each one and I'll come back when I've done that. So now I've reversed all the jaws, let's just try the disc on it, just a bit of movement either side, but now we'll find out whether or not I can swing this in the lathe without the gap out. So this is the test really of this approach. If this doesn't work, I've got to think of something else. Okay, let's try it. This truck is a big heavy lump. <clears throat> hey, look at that. We're in luck. I'm just going to clamp it roughly, okay, it's not going to be centred now. I'll just do it roughly to hold it in place and then I'll start clocking it. But how about that, eh? Look at that. Don't fall out. Perfect. Just this morning, I made this spigot peg here that screws into the saddle where the travelling steady would go and it's a 12 millimeter peg and it takes the mitotoyo gauge oh, tighten 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 there we go and now the gauge travels with the saddle and I will now use it to clock up the inside of this uh, disc where the handbrake goes the drum part of the disc and get it somewhere like centered well, I've got it dialed in this way. It's jumping about all over the place just because of the rust on the face. But that's pretty good. Now I need to check it here and make sure this doesn't have too much wobble on it. Okay, well as close as I can get it, it runs out by 0.1 of a mil. And to be honest, I don't know if that's close enough or whether it would cause the disc brakes to judder much. But what I will do is I'll clock it in the centre here and just see if this is running out at all. I've done what I should have done in the first place, which is to clean this back face here. 
and try to get it seating uh, a bit better uh, on the chuck. So we'll repeat what I've just done basically. Okay, now I'm happy with it. This is measuring inside the drum for the handbrake. And that's near enough as I'm going to get. I've got the disc to within 0 0.05, which is 2 thou. Okay, it's in and clocked, so now time to fire up the lathe. See what it looks like. Remembering to put the lathe on the low range. Yep, I'm happy with that, so I'll start by machining this inside face. Well I'm set up now and ready to try a cut. This is where it's handy to have the multifix because I've just notched it round 140 which is giving me the right angle with my boring bar against this inner face. Well I'm very pleased with that. The way that's cutting it could almost be cast iron. But I'm not sure. Now we can turn our attention to machining this face where the caliper clamps. It's quite a big diameter and to get the cutting tool into the right position I've taken this tool and reversed it in the holder. And if I swing this around and move it off by one notch, so one fortieth, drop that on, that looks about about right. So I can get from here into that corner, no trouble at all. I have to be careful that the saddle doesn't move too forward, far forward this way and hit the disc, so I'm actually going to clamp it up just for safety in case I grab the wrong handle which does happen from time to time. I've set the speed to 50 rpm which is what I was aiming for at this cutting at this edge but I've realized overnight because you might notice I've got a different shirt on today so uh, this is tomorrow that I've probably been a bit conservative with the speed and I could probably run a, perhaps double that 100 here uh, particularly as it cuts so well in this drum. But let's just start at 50 and see where that takes us to. Okay, that's the first cut done. We're almost there, but it's just got a few marks on it and I think I'll do a second cut probably just 0.1 of a mil that's four thou. Well I've finished the second light skim it's still not perfect it's got some blemishes but I think it's adequate. Well that brings us to the end of this project so I hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching Axby Shed.